Osiris. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Corner of Gray Street podcast. We're back with Steve Lillywhite for part two of the Lillywhite exclusive. Steve, thanks for coming back. Well, thank you. It is now 24 hours later. I am sporting a different shirt and a different hat. Whereas, as I say, Bruce's guitar is strangely in exactly the same place behind his shoulder. So I believe he hasn't played it since last no. night. You haven't, Bruce. That's for people who are watching, not listening, by the way. Maybe I'll play it after this one. We'll see. Oh, good. Hey, Bruce, <laughs> if you had to play any Dave Matthews Band song, which one would be your favorite song to play? Typically, I go with something like The Stone, just because it's good fingers. Um, you kind of move around, and it's fun. You hit a few chords in it, too, and it, it kind of hits the creative juices and stretches your fingers out a little bit. Interesting. Nolan, are you a musician? And if so, what would be your song that you would play? Yes, I also dabble on the guitar. Uh, first song I ever learned was Halloween. So oh love that one. But I'd say, I think What Would You Say is my favorite to play. I love that riff little and the jam. A little bit of funk. That's yeah. fantastic. That's fantastic. So good. Yeah. <laughs> I can't believe <laughs> I'm interviewing you guys. Hell yeah. <laughs> Starting it off right. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, yes, we made it into the 2000s uh, yesterday, and we're just touching on Dave and Trey um, <clears throat> and their like collaborations and how Trey played on Some Devil and guested with Dave on Dave and Friends. But that's not the only connection. Uh, in 1996, you produced both Crash and Billy Breathes. Uh, in the same year, which is crazy, as Billy Brief's widely considered Fish's best studio work. So, yeah, I just want to ask you, what was that year like for you doing both of those? Well, I finished Crash, and the engineer on the Crash album was a lovely friend of mine called John Sickett. Um, and he, uh, after the Crash album, Fish wanted him to work with, with them. So he went up to Bearsville uh, into the barn and started working with Fish. And because we'd been, we, you know, we were pretty close, we would occasionally speak. And, uh, and, and he, after like a month or something, he said, Steve, there's something going on here that could be good, but they've got no bloody idea. They've got no one leading them. Um, Basically, what they've done in a month is record something called The Blob, which is everyone just experimenting with something. He says, it's, I don't know. It feels like they need a producer. And I think he spoke to Trey. And, um, and, and before, this was before Crash came out. That's right. So I said, look, I'll come up to Bearsville and we'll, we'll talk. So I went up to Bearsville and, and we chatted. And, and Trey was like, yeah, well, you did the first Dave Matthews album, but what's this new one? You know, and I said, look, do you want to, I've got a cassette, come and listen and I'll play you some of it in the car. So we went in the car and I, I played in the cassette of Crash. And, um, and he went, oh, oh, yeah, yeah, that sounds good. <laughs> yeah, okay, would you like to come and help us? you know, with our album, because honestly, we, we, we're sort of going around in circles and we, we, we don't really know. So I, I went in there and, um, and, and it's funny, I, I, I do what I do and I'm never quite sure what I do, but it, I sort of just walked in and because I, I'm not like some people in life are just alpha males in everything they do. Right. I am not an alpha male, except in a recording studio. And when I'm in a recording studio, I sort of acquire this, this alpha maleness, like I'm, the, I'm the, 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 the lifeguard on the beach. All of a sudden, I, I become the person who everyone looks to and, and like, what do you think? You know, because I, I, I just, because I've been in studios all my life, they, and I do, 
believe that if I can inspire confidence in people, they don't have to think about my job. You know, the worst thing for a band is them to think about my job. So I need them to be completely free to be creative. And I then steer it towards the end result. And the end result, of course, is an album. Now, it sounds a bit, yeah, of course, but but sometimes if you if there's no one to steer it, it just doesn't go anywhere, you know. So <clears throat> I listened to the blob and there was <laughs> there was one great bit in it. I loved it. And it was the, the, the it was the, the thing steep. There was a song called Steep and 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 swept away. There was like mm -hmm. so so I thought oh, that was good. Let's put that together and 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 then I can't I mean, this was an album of, of, of excess. You know, we were all quite um, uh, involved in our active party life. But it was, you know, when it's a different world being like that in the studio and being like that live. You know, people have always said to me, oh, God, you must have had crazy fun times and groupies and and all this stuff I go, no yeah back in the day when we were taking drugs and doing all that it was all for the greater good of the record it wasn't that sort of world of like woo let's just party it was never just party it was like let's make an album and oh part of that is we do this you know have a joint and have a you know do this and um so that was it was so we we it was it was great fun. And, you know, I'd gone from working with Dave, who are great musicians, a Dave, a Dave Matthews band, great musicians, and going to Fish, who are also great musicians, but in a completely different way, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and I just, I, I, and, I, and I wasn't aware of Fish as a concept, you mm -hmm. know. I... Um, so for me, you know, when, when, as I say, in Woodstock, I said yesterday that, that there was this place called the Tinker Street Cafe where a band would go and do a gig. You know, when Dave played at Tinker Street Cafe, there was not much, no one really, it wasn't a big deal. When Fish played Tinker Street Cafe, people came from all over because it was, at that point, Fish were this sort of much more, Mm -hmm. much bigger band and much more um considered like real you know greatness you know so so i learned a lot um from being with them and it was but you know part what's great about fish is also their their weakness is the fact that they can play anything you know so mm -hmm. My favorite forms of fish are when they're a little bit prog, you know, the country rock stuff. I, it's just, you know, I mean, I went to see Dave supported the Grateful Dead about a year or two before Jerry died. And, mm -hmm. you know, Capshaw was a huge deadhead. And there was this, you know, and I was really excited to see the Grateful Dead because I'd never seen them. And I saw, and I honestly, I thought it was like a bunch of old men. I mean, I didn't get it at all. It was so, it wasn't loose in the way that the Rolling Stones are loose and cool. It was loose in the way of old men who couldn't really play. And I, I don't know, it, it, it completely went over my head. I didn't get it at all. And I was, but I was so into Dave, you know, I mean, it's like, they were like crisp and clean and the arrangements were, were wonderful and weird and time signatures and stuff like that. Grateful Dead, it was like what I would say bad pub rock, you know, and if anyone knows me, if I describe your band as being bad pub rock, that's pretty bad. Now, this was towards the end of the Grateful Dead, so probably they were a lot better before then. And it was me. Their worst years. You know, it was. Yeah. Probably, and I, I would have loved to, you know, and, and I've never gone back and listened to any other stuff, but it was it just didn't seem to me to be to be um as good as what what uh 
what what Dave Matthews was doing at the time. And Fish, you know, there's this thing of, oh, you know, is Trey Jerry Garcia and a fish like the Grateful Dead. For me, I mean, Fish is just fantastic, you know, and I, and I couldn't see a comparison between Fish and the Grateful Dead. Maybe there was at some point in their career. But, but at their worst, I think Fish are when they do their sort of country rock 12 bar bar band bluesy stuff, which I sort of decided there shouldn't be any of that on Billy Breeze. You know, there's I none. There's none. I mean, it's like songs like Free and, um, you know, it, it was, uh, yeah, uh, they were waste. Way, yeah, Waste is is like a probably a. I, I looked on you on iTunes and Waste is their biggest. Um, yeah, it's like biggest stream, single and whatnot. Their biggest streaming song, you know, which yeah. is it's a great song. Someone could cover that song and and probably have and and do it like a a David Foster type production or something. You know, you could you could make that song huge. I think Dave's covered it a lot, but he always does it just solo. Um, he always hmm. would do it solo. I really liked, yeah. you know, like the dichotomy of the album. They, they, and like you just said, they drifted away from kind of their weird, weirder, strange, um, avant garde ish type music. And when they yeah. did this album with you, they had just some, like you said, prog rock, some great rock tunes, free theme from the bottom, um, uh, stuff like that. And then they had these beautiful little ballads. You had waste. You mentioned swept away and steep, but then just like the, um, instrumental bliss. Um, and, um, oh man, what was the other one is slipping, flipping my mind, but I like Prince Caspian. Oh God. Yeah. Just, just strumming yeah. that. That's kind of just like a, the rock, Rolling whatever. Stones, um, like yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and yeah, you got some just fantastic well, sound out of them. Yeah, it was. It's a complete album. You can put it on oh, from yeah. the beginning to the end, and it's a. It's as, I mean, I won't say anything like, um, you know, Dark Side of the Moon, but it has elements of a complete piece of work that 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 absolutely is a journey. You know, mm -hmm. it starts off with the rock stuff and it ends this beautiful, all these segues from Billy Breathes into Swept Away, into Steep, into Cassidy. That's a great section. Oh, oh man. It's, it's just a tri as trippy as hell. And it's, and it's, yeah, I, I, I loved it. And, you know, we, I, I loved working with them. Um, they were mad. I mean, there's this great story. <laughs> there was word that there was opium in New Orleans. There was opium in New Orleans. John Fishman, what are you doing for a couple of days, di days, guys? Well, we're just overdubbing. You're not needed. I'm driving from Woodstock to New Orleans to pick up the opium. Okay, Fishman, great. So he gets in his car and he drives down to New Orleans. Now, this was before cell phones, really. Gets to New Orleans. We get a phone call. I'm here. I'm picking the stuff up great you know when will you be back uh, probably tomorrow night i've got to drive all the way back you know he um he started driving back he got the studio is about a 20 minute drive from kingston in upstate new york and we were we were all staying on the campus right so we thought he would come straight back to the to the studio and we would see this pound of opium, a pound of opium. You know, we were so excited. <laughs> he got to Kingston and we, we didn't hear about from him for like a day. Like, where is he? We eventually, he called like two days later. Hey guys, sorry, I was so tired. I checked into a hotel in Kingston and I slept for like 24 hours. I said, okay. <laughs> come to the studio we want you at the studio so we eventually came down with this huge fucking smelly piece of like a pound of opium it was rubbish <laughs> it was it was it really just the worst it really was i don't know i'd never taken opium before so i was really excited and it didn't really do anything by the by the end of the time it was just sitting there and no one was interested <laughs> such a great story that the that, that john fishman i'm going to get the opium 
but it's he'd uh, be the one yeah yeah but but it was just full of joy and they were what i love about fish is that unlike say dave matthews band where they 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 did all meet together but they were all older when they met and it was a disparate as i say it was a disparate band of characters who all came together in charlottesville all from different places you know fish all came from the same place and they all mm -hmm. met as teenagers so it's it's in terms of other band it's much more like a u2 sort of tightness of friendship with uh fish than there is with dave matthews band you know so so um fish have got that tightness of that you only get when you start up together i mean dave matthews band are, are, are tight as friends but it's a different sort of friendship and yeah. um you know but but yeah it was it was so much fun and uh i mean i, I still I'm not annoyed because it's not my job to be annoyed at something like the cover. But when you look at the cover of Crash, which is one of the greatest sleeves, you know, because it's modern, it 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 just makes you think the album is clean and and yeah. and, and, and meaningful and everything. You look at the cover of Billy Breeds and you and it was like it was on the last day as a joke. And they never bothered they never bothered to get. I mean, I love Mike Gordon, as I say probably my favorite bass player when i was just listening to i mean because he just does incredibly random stuff and his rhythms are so beautiful and you know um but but he his face should never be on the front of a fish album <laughs> uh, <laughs> only because it gave you know i the, the music was so pristine and so so lovely and beautifully put together but the sleeve makes you think it's something else, and I think that's maybe, them though. That that is, what, that's is what's them. wrong with that? I don't. What's yeah. wrong with that? <laughs> it's that's fish though. It's like this is their most like oh. right here. Not and maybe not serious, but sort of like serious. We're great musicians. Album like we're not doing this, uh, yeah, that, yeah. and the other sort of thing. And they put that on the cover. It's freaking perfect. It, it, oh, it, it is perfect in a way, but but when but you, also when terrible. You, yeah, it's it's just when you compare it to the to the Crash album sleeve that is so beautiful yeah. and so you know it just made me made me laugh at the time, but yeah, that was um, and and you know I got to know Trey relatively well because we both I, I got sober before he did, but um, but 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 the Joy album was a completely different because there was nothing. You know, we recorded that in New York. There was no, I don't think there was even a bottle of beer on the session. You know, it was completely clean and straight. And uh, and weirdly, I haven't really listened to that album much. And I listened to it yesterday and I was, you know, songs like, like Backwards Down the Number Line, that's pretty good. And yeah. and I did, oh, I yeah. did like definitely stealing time from the faulty plan. Yes. I mean, joy is a bit waste, but less than, you know, mm -hmm. I think, you know, what else have I got? <laughs> and a song called Ocelot. I think it's just yes. so funny. So funny that you name a song Ocelot. I mean, I think I love know, that one. Kill Devil Falls is a great lyric, but it does, it does, um, it does tip into that pub rock thing mm -hmm. a little bit. It's just a, you know, mm -hmm. it's a yeah. sort of, 12 bar blues but again a great lyric um and it's funny i when we were doing it i love time turns elastic you know just because it's so so weird but but listening back mm -hmm. to it yesterday there's something about it that doesn't work for me um and i and i it may be the vocals i think trey sounds nervous when he's singing it or something like that and that actually out of all that album when I finished it, I thought, you know, time turns elastic. That was my favorite. And now listening back to it, I, I, and I, it's funny, I've, I've spoken to their management and it's, there is a, <laughs> sometimes when they do that song, people go and get a drink, you know, it's, it's part of, uh, it, it's, <laughs> they never play it. They rarely ever yeah, play rarely it. Play um, it. Yeah, well, it's just so complicated, you know, yes. that, yeah. that, um, 
but even you know mike's song um sugar shack is is great you know and and uh and as good as 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 the train song on um on billy breeze which you know again no very good hmm. uh yeah yeah I, I i was quite um i was quite impressed i was more impressed with it i remember thinking at the end that it didn't have maybe it doesn't have that sort of concept album continuity that we got on billy breeze but it's still a pretty good album and um and and i would love to work with them again actually i, I feel like there's there's a possibility that i could do something with with fish um dave matthews band no i think that's that's run its course just purely because the you know certain members are not there and and i don't feel the you know I mean, we've we've done our best work. I think you know, mm -hmm. and there's no problem about that. It's uh, it's good, but there's still a possible. I've got a little thing in my head that maybe fish could. You know, that's if I do. I would anything. Love again. that. Which yeah. which re reminds me a question for Joy. Um, that was their comeback record. This is a big fucking deal, Steve. That they selected you after their they were done as a band. And then they yeah. come back and they do a record and they come back. Number one, how does it feel to be the guy that was selected? Hey, Steve, come back. We're we're coming back. And number two, how did that happen? Well, I mean, if you look at it logically, they're, you know, I had done their best album from mm -hmm. before. So uh, unless you have a producer that you've never worked with before, and maybe they were thinking, let's have someone who at least we know you know so um so yeah i i felt honored um you know and they yeah they they they're just great guys and uh and i i every member i mean page is i, I just love page he's a real gentleman and they're all very well uh educated and you know they all come from do they come from money i don't know I, but they come from from I, I mean i think really maybe think so i don't know but they they yeah. they all had a good a good education and they, they're very well read um and, and and i love trey because he's like a headless chicken you know <laughs> he, really, he never stops he never stops never he never quite knows what he's doing i mean it's this <laughs> this <laughs> he's he is really great and so intelligent and and uh yeah just a lovely man. So who made the call? They they did. I I very rarely approach an artist to work with them. Or no, who so did you get a management call? Did Trey call you? I think may have been Capshaw. I don't know. <laughs> okay. Because they at that point they were with Red Light. Whereas before when I did Billy Breeze, they they had different management. Mm -hmm. Um and then they went to Red Light. Uh, yeah, I can't remember, but it was, yeah. you know, very happy to, 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 to be back in there. It didn't really touch. It didn't move the needle like Billy breathes did, but you know, I almost, I was gonna say, I almost wondered, um, since Trey was coming back and he was sober, if he knew that you were sober and he was like, man, I trust this guy. Like, you know, he, he's going to help keep me clean. He keep me focused. And he needed that at the time, maybe. He'd maybe, maybe not. He's pretty, he was pretty confident in his own sobriety. I think mm -hmm. it was, you know, we, we, you know, we did, um, we bonded over sobriety for sure. Good. You know, and, uh, and, you know, the, the great thing about being sober is that you can laugh about the pound of opium story and you can laugh <laughs> about it, you know, <laughs> yeah. rather than, rather, just because it's so ridiculous and so funny um yeah but yeah that's that was that was great as, as i say it's, it's nice to have a um a little piece in the fish history you know yeah. and, and, yeah. and i mean trey did contact me a couple of years ago with the possibility he says i want to do it i love he says we never make money on our records but i just love the experience says we don't we make records and we pretty much record them at our sound checks and then release them but it's not the same he said 
and I got the feeling he was going to ask me to do another studio album and then someone else did it. <laughs> mm -hmm. I don't know. Maybe I wasn't as enthusiastic. Maybe I, I was living in Indonesia and it was a different world I was in. But um, but maybe, I th maybe I'll try and get to see them at the Sphere because uh, that would be... That would be pretty amazing. Even though I don't know if it'll be more fun watching the band or watching the crowd during those shows where they're standing oh, those God. steep things and it is so out. Well, the, 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 and I hate and I don't want to make this a prediction, but even with U two before the U two shows, I was absolutely scared shitless that that there are no barricades and and the top tier of the sphere it's like maybe fifty rows. And you, your, your senses are so like overwhelmed by everything that if, even if you stand up, you could, and literally if you, if you tripped over, there could be a, um, a tumbling domino effect and mm. who knows, I mean, mm. and fish, you know, they have to be very careful, you know, and I don't know if anyone's flagged that, uh, but it's, it's, it, it's not. I mean, it's so steep, the uh, because you need it so because everyone's quite. It's eighteen thousand people, but you're. You feel like you're part of it, even in the worst seat in the house at the top. Mm. You know, you you because you've got. You've got. You can see more when you're lower down and you're closer to the band. You have to look up to see all the amazing effect. But when you're higher, you're further away from the band, but you can see it this wonderful all around you. So I, I, I think it really is one of the modern wonders of the world. It's, uh, have you seen any, any, um, video clips of the U2 thing? Oh yeah. It's, it's wild. Just, it's I mean, wild. It's amazing. Yeah, it really is. So, yeah. Uh, well, I'll jump in and say I had not really listened to fish, uh, much before the last couple weeks and <laughs> Oh, really? We're going to do an episode, like an off-season episode, where I like go through some studio and live stuff. And I texted Bruce because he's been trying to get me to listen to them forever. And I just haven't done it. Yeah. But I, I, I wrote down in the notes, I was like, Billy Breathes is their masterpiece. And I was like, my other favorite album is Joy. And oh. Bruce was like, well, Joy was Lily White. And I had no idea. But there you go. Those are my two favorites. Nolan, if you weren't married, I would love you. <laughs> I told him, I was like, yeah, you loved them because Steve did them. Yeah, Lily White I did I them. Like, I was like, he did Joy too? What? Yeah. Wow, that's great. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Um, Joy had a better right. album cover too than Billy Breeze. It was actually yeah, kind of cool. It was cool a great looking. album cover. I think they, yeah. they realized the mistake. But there you go. So perhaps the 25th. Uh, anniversary of Billy Breathes should be re, you know, maybe a different album. No, that's ridiculous. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> like the gold gold edition. You know, there you go. Well, yeah, we'll have to we'll have to get on that. We'll also have to put the feelers out there and be like, hey, get fish to uh to call Steve, get him, yeah, let him yeah. give him well, give him know, a call. That would I would love to. I would just love to hear from them. You know, but um, yeah, good. So I, I well, really. We Again, a lovely band, lovely bunch of guys. Oh, for sure. Yeah, I'm sure the DMB fans are loving all of the fish talk, but you better love I'm it sure. because you need to love these albums. You need to go take a listen to them if you haven't already, because they are really, really actually good albums, and they are closer to the potential DMB style music in than any other fish music. So, I think um, what I'm what I'm good at is bringing out the essence of a band on their records you know it's it's like because i always before i ever see a band but, but before i ever produce a band i have to see them live and when i see them live i sort of close my eyes and i try and imagine the best way of translating that into a record it's not about my ego of how i make records and how i do things it's like how can I best make a recorded version of these songs at this time? You know, and um, and I'm feel I'm pretty good at that. Um, without you know, not taking the essence of the band away, 
but but mm -hmm. but taking what it is and and making a recording that is hopefully as timeless as possible because that you know when you're making art everyone makes art every way you look is art but timeless art is the you know we're talking about albums that that people love 25 years later 20 years later so you know there's there's a reason so i feel quite honored that you know we are talking about these these things and and as if they were relatively you know new things because you know people don't talk about the spin doctors like this <laughs> you know i mean no no it's offense but, but it's <laughs> true you know and they had a huge hit you know it's, yeah. it's it's not about that it's about the the big picture of of making these records yes and now it's time to jump back into the dmv world DMV away world. from the world away, away from the um away have... from the world away from the so world. the big question to start things off when were you contacted about working on this album because there were rumors all through the 2000s about you working with them potentially 04, 05, 06, 07, and then that whole thing got scrapped and then Big Whiskey, but it took till 2012. So can you walk us through yeah. that? Well, I'd heard the rumors, but uh, but no one contacted me, <laughs> you know. Um, but there was, you know, it's a bit like a sports, you know, in, in, in sports, West, in, certainly in football, which is my sport of my choice, you know. There are these rumors about someone being transferred, but n neither of the teams have actually even spoken to each other. But someone put something out there as a little teaser. But no, I, I, I'd heard some rumors. I never got contacted. And then it was Capshaw who contacted me. And, uh, and I said, well, great. I mean, I would love to come and see come and see Dave and talk about it. And Dave and Tim were playing a show in New York. And... Um, and I came to see a Dave and Tim show and and sort of walked backstage. And it was it was like we'd never, you know, like the years had never, 10 years had passed, but it was exactly the same. You know, we started going, we just reverted to kite to tart to type. Um I became Steve Lillywhite from the early days. He became Dave Matthews suddenly. You know, we were like, like a bit like the uncle nephew, you know, I, I, I think I felt a bit like that, you know, and his dad died very young and I, I was, you know, he felt, I mean, I'm only, how old is he? I'm, I think I'm 12 years older than him. So it, it's 56, more like a six, maybe he's 56. Yeah. yeah I'm, I'm 68. So, um, so yeah, so the 12 years, it's like your young uncle, you know, so um, I, I did, we just reverted to type and, and we, we booked the studio in, um, in Seattle and uh, it was an okay studio. And, and, you know, Dave had written these songs with Elasia and, um, and they were good. I, I really thought that that we were on to something and and as i say i haven't listened to the album much um but when i listened back to it yesterday there's there's i mean i i absolute broken things is is as is just a and weirdly with 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 sort of a little bit of time you see when you finish an album when you're so in certainly for me when you're so involved in something every song I equate it to a bit like a horse race. For me, they are all at the starting gate at the end of an album. When you finish an album, they're all even, all the songs, you know. And it's only when the album's released that some songs go ahead of the others and then they catch up and, you know, 10 years later, well, right now, you know, Crash Into Me is like, that was just another song on Crash. And now that song is huge and, you know, let me down which i loved not really not really such a big song <laughs> um, so weirdly uh and and but as great as broken broken things is 
I listen to Belly Belly Nice. That like the second song, you've got them, you've got them in your hand, and you think, yes, there's the there's the the, the potential of this being something great when you listen to Broken Things, and I absolutely believe that. And then this fucking crap song called Belly Belly Nice with the worst cheesiest stock brass arrangements I have ever heard. And I should have put my fucking foot down and told them that is not good enough. And I didn't. Honestly, it's an embarrassment. Honestly. Honestly, it is. And yeah. it was and 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 broken things is so brilliant. You know, but 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 on an album, you can lose people, you know, and maybe they didn't even bother to listen to Mercy, which is a great song. And worked really well, and that was great. And uh, Mercy is, you know, I mean, Mercy is like a, like a crash into me, but it is still pretty good. I, I, I'd, I'd forgotten how much I, I like that song. Gaucho. You know, it's it's, it's a great Dave Matthews albums track. You know, and um, yeah, and I, I'm just looking down here and. Oh, and I, I almost cried when I heard Sweet. It's, you know, I mean, great lyric. I'm in too deep. Mm. The idea that, you know, the swimming analogy with, with your, with your, the love of your life, you know, uh, it's just, 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 you know, I mean, Dave at his absolute, um, at his absolute best. And it, it's, it was a good, know, it was a good production run there, actually, from Mercy Sweet gaucho um as far as mm -hmm. like you did some of the um the segues and and yeah, crossfades and stuff like that those were good all that is me maybe i should have they should have been more on that again i will you know it's funny i listen to it when i listened to it originally because it was mixed by someone else i had grown mm -hmm. to love my mixes so much that i i just by definition dismissed you know, and Dave said to me, Steve, be bigger. Go and help him mix it. Just imagine you and him together can make it better than it is. And I I can understand why he said that. But also, there's the reality of how people work. And I don't think I could have done what I did with this guy. You know, um, it, it, it's 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 very difficult to you know and dave was trying to be nice and say look look be bigger than you know be bigger than and i and i was grumpy i was like but i can't you know it's not and i can understand why he would see my uh my inability to to get involved with this other guy's mixing as me being truculent mm -hmm. but it wasn't me being truculent. It was really, I didn't think that I could do it with this guy. And um, and I was, you know, no one ever said to me, Steve, do you want to try doing it with someone else? You know, I mean, I was not, again, these, these, these decisions behind my back. Um, and, you know, I, I, weirdly, after I listened to the album, I, I texted the engineer who I haven't spoken to for years uh, on Instagram and, um, and just let's see if he's answered me, Floyd. <laughs> do, 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 do. Yes, he did. Hey, hey, Floyd, I'm just about to do a podcast about our album and was listening and wanted to thank you. It would be great to catch up. He says, hey, dang, man. <laughs> I love that. So great to hear from you. Yes, I use WhatsApp. Lots of relatives abroad. Very helpful. Working on that DL MB album with you was a huge highlight in my life. So thank you. I mean, it was just great. We had a great time um, making that album. And um, and he has. What I'm saying is, he has a copy of it still. How, which is my vision of the album um, mm. before this other guy remixed it. So. I would love to hear it now because it sounds pretty good to me now, <laughs> weirdly, you know, but I, and maybe my version doesn't sound as good as I remember it, but I, I'm going to ask him to make me a copy and send it over because, uh, um, yeah, I just like to like to hear because yeah, I was, a I was a little grumpy and, but it wasn't, I was, I just felt, 
that it was beyond my control. And I have to have control of my albums. And and this other guy had his system and how he did things. And I wasn't part of that, you know. And uh, and I know Dave, you know, Dave was great. He said, Steve, you know. And I, and I remember telling him about my, you know, I never even got a credit on Busted Stuff. And I was really hurt. He wasn't even aware of that, <laughs> you know. He, wouldn't think he would have been. Yeah, yeah, it's just sad that, that no one else thought about that. You know. Mm. Anyway, I'm bringing up my <laughs> my gripes about that. It's just no, that's okay. We I, we also have um, a, a copy or a couple of songs I know that are your mixes from that album. Um, we we have good friends sometimes that are nice, and um, <laughs> we we do we oh, do oh, like the, the world. Yes, we do like your um, mixes as well. I remember it being a thing several years ago, um, and they wound up in in our possession. But yeah, um, it was. I don't think we had the whole album. I can't remember, but I'll have to go dig it up. I haven't, okay. like, like you said, I hadn't listened to this album either in a in a little while and yeah. revisited it. But that reminded me. Okay, so there is, and this is the real holy grail. There is a whole version of my mixes of Under the Table and Dreaming which I finished that album and presented it to RCA. And that was when they got Tom Lord Algae to remix it. But I remember listening to that album at a playback at Bearsville, thinking it was probably the greatest album ever made. And um, honestly, and I, and I, again, I would love to hear those original mixes mastered and, and properly compare, I think it was, I, I still think, I mean, I have to believe in myself, right? I have to believe in my, my system. And, um, I, but exactly. I heard about, I don't know where we would get that from. It would be, uh, well, this year is the 30th anniversary. So D and B management, get on it. 30th yeah. anniversary under the table and dreaming, re-release the Steve Lily white mixes. Mix. Do it. Oh now. my God. Yeah. There's a now. separate thing. But let but let's master them properly. Give them yeah. give them the the credit that they deserve because they're they're all there. They were all recorded onto you know half inch tape. It was all mm -hmm. properly done. They'll be in the vaults. But um, I would love that you know, or at least I'd love to hear them to see if it's worth doing. But um, but yeah, that'd be incredible. Yeah, just something for people to hear. So yeah, yeah I, I, I um in terms of. I mean, it, it, it was so funny because we all did revert to type, you know, um, like 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 Boyd was was working out like a fucking demon. He had this his bite and smoking up a storm. I mean, I've never known any. He would walk around with a cloud of smoke around his face. Uh, but it was just great. And, and Timmy was just, you know, he's so funny um uh, yeah yeah we 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 all it, no one you know stefan was as zen as he's always been you know just just sitting there working on his bass lines um loving every minute of it being just being the perfect bass player you know um and carter was always <laughs> tuning his snare carter don't tune your snare drum up so high but you know the reason he tunes it up so high so he could get the very fast playing you know but sometimes sonically it's not as good when it's so tuned high but he does it so he gets the bounce um mm -hmm. so uh that was funny now we had a great time we it was um as i say at the end it, it was a little sour because i didn't uh, I didn't think the mixes were as good as mine, but, but, you know, it's, um, it's, it's part, it is my fault. I have to, you know, I, I become so passionate about my, you know, I should just go, it's a job. It's not your album. It's their album, but I become passionate about my belief because I have to have this belief in myself when I'm doing it. Cause I put so, you know, I'm not like Rick Rubin who can do five albums at the same time and and just mm -hmm. go in and say yeah you know that's not good enough do it again and leave you know i have to be in there 
bloody ru- running the show and and uh, and doing everything. And I, I don't know it completely wastes me but it's something i feel i have to do for me to make a even a an average album i have to put everything in and i'm i'm not such a good delegator and that is maybe a problem but there you go <laughs> say lovey that <laughs> i More totally get it <laughs> yeah you get that yeah yeah well so you, t- you mentioned several of the band members and how they were what this was your first time working with Rashawn and Rashawn Jeff and Jeff. Yes. And, yes. Uh, Dave has kind of referred to Rashawn. He's like the kind of musical director of the band. Um, yeah, and now he's been, is. he's been in deep longer than Leroy was, which is insane. Oh, absolutely. Uh, and an incredible musician, you know, a real, yeah. a real scholar and a real mm-hmm. musician, you know? Yeah. Um, but you know, I suppose it's different being a founding member of a band to being a well coming into the band from being a session musician to coming into the band from being um a barman a guy who plays at at at, at, uh the pub in what's the pub in charlottesville where they all met um millers millers you know and 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 it's just different. And, you know, he was already a master musician before he joined. Well, actually, so was Leroy. It was just different, you know. Um, Leroy was always a solo artist. So whenever we did parts, it was always a little bit like if we built Roy into a section, into a brass section, it never sounded like a brass section. It was Leroy tracking himself up a few times. So it sounded mm-hmm. sort of unique and different. Mm-hmm. You know, my one question when I went off on Belly Belly Nice is that it was just a stock. Hand horn lines. I mean, it's the sort of thing that you, you know, it's the first, it's the first thing that comes into your mind. And sometimes the first thing that comes into your mind, you should always be aware of because, but, but sometimes you need to dig deeper, you know, and I suppose if your world is that of a session musician, you don't, and when you're such a good musician, you've never experienced the world of digging deeper because you've never Mm. had to, because you've had charts in front of you and you play your charts and it's sort of more like a job than a vocation. And, and, you know, and, and Dave Matthews band is a vocation for all involved, you know, maybe not so much if you're coming in later because you weren't involved in the early days of, of pain and sleeping in the van and, and, and all that, you know, it, so it's a different dynamic. That's all. And, uh, mm-hmm. and, and as I say, the dynamic of Leroy in the band was a unique dynamic you know um the new guys are are, are just incredible and lovely people they you know there's no question about it but but i just felt and it was my fault i should have said come on is that arrangement good enough and i didn't you know Mm. producer's fault always is the producer's fault so i'm never (laughs) questioning anyone in them but but you know it's, it's just i didn't have the vision that was one little bit of vision that I didn't have because who knows if if that song wasn't on the album and it had gone into you know because the idea of 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 holding someone when they play an album you want to you know you want to stop them taking the needle you know you want to stop them changing tracks and I think that you know it's just it's like a, a sub version of too much you know it just just didn't uh didn't really work for me but I mean, they haven't played it in years so maybe it didn't really work for them really um yeah. yeah they've they've abandoned honestly quite a few of those songs um but they've continued to play some of them um right. and one of the two that i want to mention next just came back like over the last two years uh, a little bit and that's drunken soldier but the one that has not come back that is it hurts my soul. It's snow outside. Um, 
And I think that was a complete studio master. We think that both of those are studio right. masterpieces. But that end of the album, those two songs, Snow Outside sounds the most like if you could put that on Crash. You could put that on that other DMB Lily White albums. Yeah. Weirdly, um, that, that yeah. was my vision from beginning to end because that was my mix. Um, so the, the little subtleties... That, no, I felt I, I, I'd forgotten that they use my mix on that. So when I, yesterday when I was listening to the album, I heard Snow Outside and I went, oh, this has a certain different sound to the others. I like it. Mm -hmm. And and actually, yeah, because I mixed it. Um, <laughs> weirdly, you know, the, 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 the Drunken Soldier, I also thought my mix was spectacular, um, was really good. You know, um, so... Yeah, I, I love Drunken Soldier, especially the outro. I, I love giving, mm. especially Tim Reynolds, I love giving him a word. You know, I just say a couple of words and he just immediately gets what I'm saying. I said Pink Floyd, you know, and immediately oh. he went, mm -hmm. <laughs> like, Tim, I love you, you know. <laughs> <laughs> because, you know, you can't say Pink Floyd to... to, to to Carter or to, you know, I mean, they don't, that's not their world, you know, they're yeah. earth, wind, earth, wind and fire and stuff like that. But um, uh, maybe a little bit of Pink Floyd. I'm, maybe I'm wrong there, but um, certainly Stefan knows Pink Floyd. Uh, oh, yeah. But, but it was, um, it was just great, you know, and I, I uh, this isn't, what's the lyric? Something, it's a satellite. This isn't, then it's a satellite. That's not a star. It's a satellite. It's not, it's not a star. It's a yes. <laughs> just fantastic. Um, yeah. <laughs> and so then, good. Yeah, it, it it's great. And I say snow outside um, with the with the steps at the end and going so into, good. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was. It, it's there's great. so much going on in that song. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Again, that's you know I see when I'm when I'm recording, and this is my theory about why I'm the best person to mix my songs is I come from a, from a world where you mix everything as you go along. So, yeah. you know, um, and I think maybe, you know, so, so I always say to them, if you don't like how it's sounding as it's going along, it's not going to sound that much different at the end, but everyone seemed to love it, you know? Um, so the, uh, yeah, from big. Yeah, so that's how I mix. So it, it is slightly different because I I come from the old school of mixing. Nowadays, you know, people just record and record and record, and then they 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 do stuff in they they, you know. But I like to to every time you overdub, you're mixing. You know, every time you add something to the song, you're either making it better or making it worse. And so I mm. that's how I think. I add, um, hello, my, my maid has just arrived, my cleaner. Uh, <laughs> I, I think that I, um, um, yeah, that's how I work. I build things up so that at the end of the day, your record is finished, you know, because you just, that's how the Beatles worked, you know, and, and they didn't have a safety net because they, they had to mix things together. Um, you know, they had to mix the bass and drums together or mix the guitar solo on the drum track. So they had to get the levels right. Mm. <clears throat> so, you know, that's that's how I feel. That's how I, I work. So I, I'll often process things and mix them down. I mean, I, you know, influenced by Brian Eno a lot for how he works because I've worked with him. And um, it's, you know, so I'll process the guitar or the or, or the violin and i'll put all the reverbs on that i need sometimes you need a lot of reverb on on boyd tinsley mm. you know and a, a lot of love <laughs> to, to 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 make the sounds beautiful you know mm. um but I, I used to love doing that that was you know i would do that in the morning before the band came in and uh and they, they as far as i was i could see no one ever said anything you know, that they didn't like it, you know, but they, yeah, I think it's, I think it's one of their better studio albums from the last 
I guess since 2000. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. I mean, yeah. you can't, you can't really, you know, the first three are in a, in a, in a class of their okay. own, I think, you know? Yeah. Um, and then it became a bit more dissipated, you know? Yeah. I mean, you could put the Lily White sessions in that a little bit, but, but from, from every day onwards, it became a different, a different mm -hmm. thing, you know? Um, but there was a continuity I felt and a, and a oneness with though even the Lily White sessions joining it on to the end of before these crowded streets, they it felt like it was part of a, a singular vision, a singular, but 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 not being the same, you know, a singular mm -hmm. journey. But yeah, it was know. a journey exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They haven't truly found that I don't think in the studio much outside of working with you. Um, I think well, that makes... it's, it's just become life gets in the way of you know they they they've a, a bit like fish you know it's a self-fulfilling prophecy where the albums aren't as important you know sure. and, they, and they have yeah. so much um you know the albums are not as important so that there's not as much effort put into making the albums mm -hmm. you know the budgets are not the same so you don't spend as much money and you don't get as good quality records and it's it's a snowball thing you know less money yeah. goes in less money comes out you know and that's that's the world it is you know and it's so easy to make records just on a computer now you know setting up a whole band with everything it's, as a as a financial concept you know you might as well just go and do gigs you know you mm. make far more money that way and you've got oh, yeah. such a, you've got yeah. such a, a deep well of of wonderful music to 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 dig into you know hmm. i mean I, I think some artists especially the the artists from the generation before this lot they you know they they they've made so many records that they've sort of slightly blotted their copybook you know i mean i i think someone like paul mccartney or 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 uh, elton john they've made so many albums that if they make a new album it's like What's the, you know, you don't listen, you don't think, I mean, my generation, not your generation, but my generation, it used to be Paul McCartney's made an, you know, wow. But now he's made so many records where he didn't need to say anything, but he felt like he had to make a record. And um, weirdly, there's a, a Billy Joel hasn't made an album in 20 years. So if there was a new Billy Joel album, you'd start, you'd go, well, he's got something to say maybe it's worth listening to it you know but um so i you know I'm, I'm a great believer that that let let the young people do it unless you've got something really important to say leave your ego out of this you know and and and, and really look at yourself and go are these new records i'm making as good as the classic records i made well if it's not don't release it <coughs> That's what I yeah. think. Anyway. Yeah. Do you remember any songs that you worked on during those sessions that didn't make the cut for the album? Oh, I don't know. I um Yeah. Are there any? I I I, I don't remember. Yes. Um I don't know all of them. There's there's a one or two that I've heard. Um and then there were other, you know, the rumor mill, right? That people say that yeah. there were all these things and um, going into the album, people were saying, or even Dave said he wanted to do a an album of songs that they had played, but that they hadn't put in the studio. Right. Um, was that ever a conversation that he brought up to you or did he have the like new songs corn, and he was like... Cornbread or something? Does that sound familiar? He, that was one that made a bonus oh, disc at one point right okay yeah yeah there was there was a there was there was definitely talk that that was going to be the album but then he came in with these he had i think he just got a new phone that had a record function on it so yeah. he could actually record what he was writing because i think he would sit down and play a song and if he didn't remember it it would just be gone so he never recorded mm. it this was a really great thing for him because he could record what he was doing 
he then went back and listened to it. And that was the basis of some of the songs on this album. So um, huh. it was literally the technology, you know, because Dave, you know, up until that point, if a song had resonated with him well enough, he would have remembered it and kept it because he yeah. couldn't he couldn't record it. You know, he had no way of recording it at home. He's the, he's not like a tech guy, <laughs> you know. Yeah. So so he 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 and he was so amazed. He said, "Listen to this. I can record." myself just so easily you know it was <laughs> oh my gosh so it was it was great um so i think that's how yeah so that I'm, I'm sure but there were all these other songs from live but but you know you you listen to to all those live gigs from you know so you know what there is and what mm -hmm. there isn't but um what are they doing now well, they released that album this year, which I think you said that you tried to give a listen to, right? I did. Walk and around I the moon. To a bit of it. Yeah. It's again, you know, I have to come to terms with the, with certain elements that are now staples in the band. And I, mm. it was okay. No, it sounded yeah. good. You know, it was, um, you know, I'm, there's certain things on an album that you that give you certain emotions that you can't you don't know how they come they come from a magic that that you know and um like the the word joy actually you can't there's no preset for joy for the feeling for those feelings that you get when music just means so much to you and, and, and how that was done. I don't know. It was just this wonderful. It was just the connection of the time, the people, the place, the, 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 the atmosphere in the studio, there's something, you know, and I'm, I'm an atheist and I, you know, so I don't really believe in a, in a traditional God, but I, I obviously, you know, being sober, I believe in a power greater than myself. And and there, that power that's greater than me, uh, uh, it, at very much on a basic level, can be a group of people all working together towards a common goal, you know. And um, and that's what I think we had, and that's what I'm not hearing so much anymore, mm -hmm. you know. And yeah. it, it's it's. And I, and I didn't so much hear it on Away From The World either. Although there's little bits of it in there, but but it seems to have, you know, it's become this thing where let's work on this song and make this, rather than work on the whole idea, you know. And um, mm -hmm. I, I, I don't know, maybe I'm overthinking it and maybe to the, to the, to the listener, they, they don't know what I'm saying, but but I, 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 I do believe in the, in, in the magic of the moment and, mm -hmm. and, and, and that magic translating onto the, onto the record and that being something that can then come back to the listener. Yeah. Yeah. I think you're like spot on with all of that. Really? Um, and okay. quick story is so not every band member is on every song on that album. And some are old songs that old recordings that got touched up and whatever. Um, the song uh, Monsters. Yeah. Stefan is not playing bass on it. Oh, my God. And we asked him, we were like, uh, like, what? Where are you on this? It says so and so is playing bass on this. And he he had no idea. He right. did. It was Mark Batson was, playing the. Um... It was Mark Batson. Yeah. Uh, right. Playing yeah. the like electric, whatever piano bass thing. But yeah. Fawn res Fawn's responded and was like, Oh, I had no idea. And he sent a video of him. Like he made up the bass lines and it was like awesome and tweeted it at us. And, and they didn't, <laughs> they didn't put it on the record. No, there, 
the, it was a unique recording way that they did it too because a lot of it was done during covid so it'd be like one would be in the studio another would be in the studio. so someone yeah. sent it their parts then they did these songs earlier then they had this song from later and so it was a combination of all of that and they never came back into like hey no fuck that like let's go come back in as a group and record these songs yeah. so i think it was and some of that obviously like you know a producer or a, a mixer somebody made the decisions to ask x y and z but yeah, yeah, yeah they yeah, sound yeah. good live so that's been good yeah well that's, <laughs> yeah. that's at the end of the day that's the, the the main thing you know but um yeah well you and you asked us what are they doing today what is your what has your relationship been with the band and management you know because um they matter in this a little bit too ever since away from the world um and just over the past decade or so virtually nothing um What's the who's the guy at Red Light I speak to? Patrick. Patrick. Mm -hmm. Um he but he's more on the fish side now, isn't he? Is he more on the fish He's with the, Dave and Trey, kind of like um Dave and Trey, they're yeah. like well, his Patrick guys. Is, yeah, yeah. is my mate, you know, and I and and he's yeah, very he's gracious. a good dude. He's a lovely dude and, and he, he's very gracious towards me. Um Capshaw is in his ivory tower, you know way way above my pay grade <laughs> so, <laughs> so and i remember him from the early days and he's yeah. done incredibly well oh my god you know there was you know in the early days people would say to dave why don't you get a proper manager <laughs> and um and dave was you know no i want this guy i want this pit bull behind you know on my yeah. side so he, he was incredible and I'm, I'm very proud of of what he's done because he's actually a, he's a pussycat he's a lovely man but um the 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 <laughs> sometimes the image he puts out is that of uh very different you know but 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 no he's very sweet and he was he was always pretty nice to me uh, and he would never the great thing about him is he was one of those managers who would never come to the studio and give his opinion you know it's like mm. I'm your manager. My job is to sell your music. My job is not to criticize. If I criticized you, then maybe I shouldn't manage you. You know, you know, I believe in your vision. You mm -hmm. know, that's for me, that's the best manager of the lot. Because there are some managers who decide that they have an opinion about the music and they, mm -hmm. they, they get involved in the studio. And it's like, really? Let us make the music and then you yeah. be the manager. You know, I have nothing to do with the management and I respect what you do. You respect what we do in our little bubble here and let us make the music. And then you, your job is to go and sell it and to get the record company to, to back it, you know, but, um, so Patrick has been great. I've, I've spoken to Patrick a little bit about crowded streets and the, and the certain, no, I won't say it. Um, no, I, won't, I can't say that, but no. Nothing. I'll tell you later. Off air, boys. Um, okay. Well, you probably know anyway. But, uh, but, um, but yeah, we we should try and and find the original mixes of Under the Table and Dreaming. That would be a trip to listen to that. You know, we're um, on it. Yeah, yeah, that would be great. Well, we're gonna, we're gonna dig that up. Put it As I say, it's complete album. It's not even because everything was remixed on that, you know, by Tom Lord Algae, who you know, pretty good. But uh, I'd just be interested to hear. It would be it, there's definitely some different stuff. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, okay, I think we have one more question, and then okay. a quick rapid fire. But okay, do you have a proudest moment? or something of your work that you are most proud of um, when it comes to working in the studio with the band? With the band, with, with Dave Matthews' band, I would say Dreaming Tree. I mm. love that. Although I... God, this Perfect. sounds terrible. I was listening to Crash Into Me this morning, and I burst out crying. I absolutely had this visceral... Because I haven't heard it for years. I had this visceral thing of like, I was, I was swept back into this place and it was very emotional. It was, it was, you know, I then pulled myself together and stiff up a lip and very British and realized <laughs> crying, crying is for wimps. So I, I stopped crying <laughs> immediately, but I honestly did. I was so weird. Um, yeah, but Dreaming Tree, I love, I love Crush. 
um you know i love the 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 the, the segues i love the the mysterious things that we put in um mm-hmm. and and you know it was just a great you know great little vignettes in my life you know yeah snow outside and the drunken soldier was the was the last great segue on a dmb album and it yeah. may be the last one ever we don't know wow. um I feel proud. so good but feel yeah proud. it's so good <laughs> what about your biggest um and you've talked you've mentioned maybe not regrets as much but i'll, I'll just use that word what's the biggest regret but biggest with regret the band? with dave matthews band well i've just realized that this morning putting belly belly nice number two on the album <laughs> <laughs> wow okay. i thought you were gonna say the lovely ladies oh the lovely ladies i look i <laughs> <laughs> now, Belly Belly Nice is worse. I need to ask you, no, no, do you know why, why it was, not, why did, I, how did Dave not, call it that? It, it was, no, they were okay. Look, it's nothing against them, but it was just, uh, and, you know, listen to it again. I go, that's not so bad, you know, but yeah. just at, at the time, maybe it needed that lightness, but I was into the, you know, I loved Crowded Streets. More, and, and I remember bringing it home to my then wife and uh, who worked at MTV, you know, and was, was very good at playing, you know, she helped playing crash on the station and stuff. And, um, and playing, I said, listen to this, this album. I just love this album. And she says, it's very dark, isn't it? I went, oh yes, it's fantastic. But um, <laughs> yeah, she, it, it's, uh, I, it's just a great album again, front to back. It's, uh, it's got, you know, Crush, Dreaming Tree, Spoon, um, mm. you know, just, just, I love them. Oh, yeah. All but right. regrets, regrets, I've had a few, um, but too few to mention. No, I, I don't. Look, it's, you can't, That's good. you can't go, you know. I can, I Your can, answer was perfect. Your answer yeah. was perfect. The belly, we'll, we'll keep it on that. That's that's perfect. <laughs> now we got to hit him with the rapid fire. Nolan, I feel like he's, we already know the answer to the first one and maybe the second one, but I'll ask him combined yeah. and then I'll let you go. Um, favorite DMB album and then favorite DMB song. Oh, well, uh, either Under the Table and Dreaming or Before These Crowded Streets. Um, musically before these crowded streets, the, 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 the wonderful experience of my life under the table and dreaming and my favorite mm-hmm. song. Oh, uh, you know, Jimmy thing. I fucking love, you know, yeah. you think you've been searching just for a while, you know, cause it has harmony in and they, <laughs> and they really are not very good at singing harmonies, anyone, you know, and that has <laughs> just one of the great harmonies and um and you know and and dave and i would talk about it a lot i said you need more harmony. he goes yes i know no one wants to sing you know i mean carter would <laughs> sing a little bit um <laughs> he tries to get rashawn to sing some buddy will buddy the keyboardist now will sing some try to back and yeah, yeah i said maybe they're maybe they're doing it a little more now he's like that that dang steve he, he left that in my ear. Now I've got all these people singing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, oh, man. Yeah, yeah. That's that's uh, regret. No, 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 no. I'm good on that. What about uh, another album outside of DMB that you are very proud of? Oh, well, Lost and Gone Forever by Gusta. I just love that album. It's, Which uh, I listened to today. Yep. which you listen to today it's yes weirdly, i loved it no you loved it great it's yeah my, my my two sons were 14 and 15 and 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 they uh they know every single they don't know much of my work you know but they know every single lyric every single drum beat because there's no drumsticks at all on that album it's all done mm. on congas and because they didn't he didn't play a drum kit in those days wow and and it so I, I I loved how I I I lovingly put that album together. I I really thought it was great and um and it's fun and that that was also a good yeah. good fun time. So yeah, that that's of, of what I've done. I love that one. Really good. Well, that's another one that we have to recommend out to the out to the listeners. Then we've recommended two Fish albums and now a Guster album. So yeah. don't say that uh, 
that we only listen to one one band. Um, only one. We're, we're not myopic. We're not myopic. Okay, so who who is or was the the better hang? I have got a list: okay. David Byrne, Bono, yeah. Yeah. Jagger, Dave, Trey, or Rob Thomas, or Fishman. Or John Dunham. Fishman with the with the pound of opium. Um, yeah. uh, uh, certainly not Mick Jagger. A um, little bit distant. I was more on Keith's Keith's camp. Keith was a great hang. Um, mm, if, if you put Keith in there, I might have put Keith as the winner. Um, okay. But, but uh, Rob Thomas, lovely guy. You know, I, I actually what I did with uh, Matchbox Twenty was also worth listening to. Uh, there's yes. a song called How Far We've Come, which is great. I really, you know. It's really I wasn't good. I wasn't a huge fan of Matchbox 20 before because it was a bit stock rock pop, you know. But mm. I, I gave them some some spirit and some liveliness, which I thought was great. But okay, so this is a great question. Let me see. So who else? So I'm I'm dismissing Rob Thomas and Mick Jagger. Um who's left? Bono, David Byrne. David Byrne. Yeah, David Byrne's a you know, um a little out there. He's nice, but he's yeah. not He's, He's not, out there. Not, not sort of a fun guy. I mean, he is fun, you know. Yeah, he has got a great sense of humor, but but no, I'll, I'll dismiss him, which leaves Bono, Dave, and Trey, right? Yeah. Bono, Dave, and Trey. Now, let's imagine a dinner party <laughs> with Bono, Let's. Dave, and Trey. I would love that. Um, yeah. Bono, Bono would be talking about... <laughs> saving the world with dave they were <laughs> talking about saving the world trey would be just as headless as possible like going from one subject to the other and not concentrating at all <laughs> i would love that i mean i i think all three of those are wonderful human beings and um you know i mean none of them take themselves too seriously you know bono mm -hmm. has this this image of being you know very he's not at all he is he understands the ridiculousness of life and that's you know once you take yourself too seriously you, you you're you know it's the beginning of the end i hope dave doesn't take himself too seriously now and i and i'm sure trey doesn't so those three yeah. in the party i'll 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 host that would be a podcast to remember yes oh it would God. so <laughs> keith richards was the winner Oh, and Keith, well, Keith Richards, funnily enough, yeah. <laughs> in those Let's include them all. Yeah. That was great. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, all great right. Question. Great question, by the way. I think you'll like this one, too. Favorite Beatles album and favorite Beatles song? I was never so much Beatles albums. Uh, well, mm. weirdly, I like magical. Well, and they were diff slightly different in um, in America to 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 the uk oh true they, they were different versions i mean i uh i mean sergeant pepper but there's certain songs on there that are not so brilliant and i i you know i'm not sure if it hangs together as an album and and also strawberry fields wasn't on sergeant pepper even though it was recorded at the same yeah. time and i love strawberry fields and and um amazing uh but but the, my favorite, weirdly, I'll, I'll go for, you know, if you'd said to me McCartney or Lennon, I would have said McCartney. And weirdly, yeah. it was it sort of showed in that um, Peter Jackson uh, doc, documentary, you know. I mean, McCartney was the, oh, yeah. M, the MVP of those sessions. Um, Lennon was brilliant. That was incredible. Yeah, yeah, Lennon was brilliant, but but boy, when McCartney going, I've got this new song, Let It Be. You know, I was just just you know, what a piece of history. Um, I cried, I cried yeah, watching that. I was, yeah. I couldn't keep it together for that. It was amazing. Yeah, it was amazing. Y'all are a bunch and, of criers over there. Yeah, we are. I, <laughs> we're not real men. Um, <laughs> I, 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 but uh, so you know, Penny Lane, I loved, <sighs> but I, you know, but 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 Helter Skelter, you know. People used to say that, you know, well, Lennon did the rock songs and, and McCartney was the was the cutie melodic one. But but Helter Skelter was a McCartney song. And that's probably yeah. the heaviest Beatles song ever recorded. 
It's awesome. You know, so, so you know, yeah. he he wins on that. Now, you know, it, uh, Lennon probably has the greatest solo song post Beatles, uh, but number two to number ten would have to be McCartney. Like, imagine mm-hmm. probably the best post Beatles song. But but I was a huge fan of Wings, like like yeah. like Jet and listen to what the man said and you know. Uh, not even Axl Rose could fuck that up. Well, he could actually, he did. Um, <laughs> but there you go. But yeah, I, 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 yeah, Penny Lane and probably the, 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 the recordings around Sergeant Pepper were, were fantastic. Yeah. I also yeah. love Magical Mystery Tour. I think you're about oh, to say I, that earlier. I was going to say Magical Mystery Tour, weirdly. I mean, fly. Very underrated. Yes. Yes. I, I, I yeah. love that. Yeah, because yes. it's more trippy. You know, I quite like Yes. It, you know. Same. Same. Yeah, yeah we're, we're all right. All it. three peas in a pod. Um <laughs> next one is best venue for a show. Um and it can be one that you've been to or not. Well, I would say because I've just been there is the sphere mm. uh, in Vegas. I mean, it's fantastic, but having mentioned Gusta I, I I'm on their newsletter and I got a and I and I saw that they are playing Lost and Gone Forever from beginning to end the 25th anniversary at Red Rocks on August the 1st. So it reminded me of Red Rocks where I've seen Dave play but also an even more a, 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 a bigger moment for me was recording U2 at Red Rocks for an album called Under a Blood Red Sky. Um, which was a live album hmm. that that, that, that yeah. transformed, and it was it was an incredible day. And it was, you know, I love Dread Rocks. I love the, the the vibe there. So, but also I love Irving Plaza. That's a great. Hmm. That was where I first saw Dave Matthews Band, and um, yeah, and it's like not too small, but big enough so you can be close. You know, it's a it's a great venue. So yeah, so so best yeah. venue is uh, Irving Plaza and Red Rocks, but the Sphere purely for 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 wow factor, you know, and yeah. the the U two show that we worked on, you know, it was something amazing. Nolan, you, just, you were just right by Irving Plaza. I was. I stumbled across it uh, in New we York. We posted a, few, a picture of it a few weeks ago. I just I had no idea where I was. I turned the corner. I was like, <laughs> no way, <laughs> there it is. Fantastic. Um, Great spot. Uh, what's the best live show you've seen? Because I'm sure you've seen a ton. Oh, I think probably. Well, I'll, I'll say you two at Red Rocks. I was there. Mm. Well, because that the the whole show was not going to happen. Basically, the setup. You two were not huge. They they were they were big enough to play Red Rocks, which was you know pretty big. But but the big play for you two was to film Red Rocks. Hmm. Right. And they had a helicopter booked to fly over. Like, you know, you can do it all on drones now, but, you know, helicopters were expensive and this was a big expense. All day it was pissing down with rain. The The gig was going to be cancelled until 15 minutes before the band. But they said, no, wait, wait, wait. Let's hold on. Let's hold on. Let's hold on. 15 minutes before the band went on stage. The rain stopped, but the clouds and the mist and the and the it was it turned into one of the greatest occasions. And I was I was in this little cave backstage at Red Rocks with this um, the uh, mobile recording. So for the first two or three songs, I'm in there making sure everything's being recorded okay. But I say I go after a while. I go well. It's you're doing a good job. I say to the guy who's with the mobile. I go. This will be good enough. So I went and go and stand on the side of the stage just because it is one of the most, one of these moments that it was just taken from the jaws of defeat to this incredible success. And that is, you know, if you think about it, that's the greatest success of all when you go from the jaws of defeat to success, you know. And so that was probably the best gig I've ever seen. Um that sounds like a great one. Yeah, it was incredible answer. I love that. 
Yeah. Um, okay. Artist or band that you've never worked with that you'd love to work with? It is more, there is at the moment, I would say there's no one. But I would say David Bowie, at some point in his career, I would have loved mm. to be involved in because he was, was my favorite. I loved him. Um, uh, Bruce Springsteen with the E Street Band. I still, I've, I've, you know, because for me, Born to Run is one of my favorite albums. It's, uh, it's got a sound that 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 is just so attractive to me um, mm -hmm. because it's like this Phil Spectory type sound he then you know his sound then cleaned up and it became more more standard and you know born in the US you know all of that's great but born to run has this spirit and when it goes they do the little you hear the counting one two three four the highway is burning oh I can't sing, but just <laughs> some great about that song, you know? So, uh, yeah. So I would love to have worked with Bruce at his, maybe at his height, uh, of, of creativity. I mean, Arctic monkeys, big fan of them like them, mm. but, um, oh, yeah. and then there's that band goose who I think are pretty cool that, that, uh, that, that, um, he did not just say that that's our next question. No, I did. Well, Goose. No, I some of that. Yeah, yeah. There's something about them that I think. Um, I mean, I've only listened to their records, and I don't quite get the records. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know whether that, but 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 they connect somehow uh, in a great way because they play huge gigs, and you know, for me, my antenna goes. There's a connection with an audience. This is what I do. I, I, I try and take something and turn it into a recorded version of the experience that I'm getting, you know, and because I have experience in doing that, I feel that maybe I could do it again. Um, so, yeah, that, that would be maybe um, something I'd be interested in. There are other favorite band. Oh, really? Right. Okay. We love yeah, Goose. It's yeah. literally the next question on our sheet is, have you listened to Goose? Because we wanted to see <laughs> any current artists or bands where we were like, no, you need to go work with Goose. Right. Okay. No, no, they're the only other band I, I would think. But um, It's amazing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, let's I, make it happen. <laughs> well, you know, I would love, you know, Goose or Fish, that would be fine. You know, but, but let's see. Amazing. Yeah, we saw Goose four times this year together. Wow. Yeah, so yeah but i i listening to the albums i i didn't I'll, I'll have to listen to them again i nothing jumped out as being mm. special but but live they're 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 great right oh yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah the yeah. the the song drip field on the album drip field is probably their studio masterpiece and it's the thing that reminds me the most and well, reminds us nolan and i have talked about it before the yeah. most of if Lily White had produced a Goose song, Dripfield really? on the album Dripfield is it because there's a lot going on. There's you know, um, that's yeah, Driftfield. Um, Dripfield. Goose. Yep. Okay, got it. I will go and check yeah. that out. Yeah. I think you'd also <laughs> like um, Autumn Crossing is like their latest uh, EP that came out. Right. Yes. Really good studio work um, on that one. Well, they don't need me then, do they? So they have. No, um... they do. <laughs> We're a fan of who they've used as a as a producer, but I mean, come on, like let's, let's yeah. get Lily White in there, give him a shot. <laughs> well, we could attempt something. Let's see. Yeah. If you. Um, all right. So, what's next for you is working with Goose. Um, do you have anything else you want to? <laughs> You want to plug? Are you working on a book? What's what's no? I, I did my my one man show. Um, I wrote my a one man show, which was me talking yeah. about my career and you know, fair bit of dad dancing, lots of self effacing stories about the mistakes I've made, and um, and I, I put it all together. I had a uh, a guy who runs a comedy club was sort of coaching me, so 
he said, you know, you have to bring it down and then you have to bring it back up again. And, and I, and I would put bits of, I had bits of music and I would say, blah, blah, blah. And then I had my first hit, press the button and I play 30 seconds of my first hit. And then, you know, I, I did this and then I had a collage of like four songs, 20 seconds of each of them. And, you know, and, and then tell more stories then have a break, do an hour, then have a 15 minute break, then a 45 minute second set. And it was, you know, it had a nice flow to it. And then it was funny. You know, I did one show in Jakarta and um, then uh, then COVID came and I had mm -hmm. to, and I, I mothballed it. So I have to bring that back out. I will maybe, um, maybe we'll see. Um, other than that, just, you know, living my life here in Bali, it's, uh, it's building the lily pad, as I told you, um, yeah. which is, 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 is quite some place. So I'm, I'm, uh, I'm happy. That's all that matters. I That's what we like to hear. Ain't going to go see fish at the sphere. That's where he's going next. Well, yeah, I'm not sure if I can, well, I, I can either go and see fish or I can go and see one more U2 show at the sphere. I... Mm. I don't know. Well, I don't know. I don't. Well, I know I can get you two tickets, but I'm not sure. Well, I can phone Patrick up. I'm sure he can. I can. Uh, I can buy one through him, because that's what it's like. Oh. There's no such thing as a guest list anymore. Even the band has to buy their own tickets. You know, but it's hmm. look. If you can if you can, at least get them at face value. Um, yeah. There you go. Well, if you go to either, put some of it on social media so everyone can see and live vicariously through oh. Lily White. <laughs> Great. Well, oh. boys, it has been an absolute pleasure. I, I, I was a bit worried. Would part two? It was a different, slightly more melancholic um, podcast. This one, part two. Yesterday was different. So I think that was great. I, I, I thoroughly enjoyed it, and I feel a bit like it was a therapy session for me. And as I don't, <laughs> as I don't go to therapy, I'm, um, I'm, I feel quite, I feel better. And Excellent. I didn't. Well, we are licensed now then. And I yeah, didn't. Anytime you need to talk, let us know. <laughs> I know. I know. Maybe I, I should do that. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> well, we, I mean, we are yeah. beyond grateful. This is, you know, obviously something, you know, years of a dream for us to be able to, to talk to you is. Uh, you know, big fans of a lot of bands that you've worked with and everything. So we obviously appreciate it. Hopefully our audience appreciates it. I'm sure that they will. Um, and yeah, we hope that you get to work with Goose or Fish or whatever. And whatever the next work is, um, we will be sure to listen uh, for it as well. So thank you, Steve. Um, you are the man. And thank you, Nolan, for having your two flu games here in a row. We appreciate Ooh. your um fighting through and thanks to everybody this was awesome we'll see you all next time on the corner of gray street Osiris.